Jayprakash Gandhi, career consultant analyst. My dear students, most of you wanted to know about the AACT new approval process and admission process which the book they have released and the reg about the regulations. In fact, few commerce students started even asking questions, sir, I am doing commerce group, commerce, business, max, accountancy. Can I do engineering? Because they say max or physics is not definitely needed to join engineering from the coming year. So what is the actual position? Can you explain everything? That's why this video to explain about the AACT new regulations and the approval process. In the AACT has released the approval process and admission regulations for the year 2021-22 very recently. But it says very clearly that students can do engineering if they have following any of the three subjects out of this subject that is means they should either from maths physics chemistry biology computer science electronics uh, information technology information sciences technical vocational studies biotechnology agriculture business studies out of this you should have minimum three subjects so it's not necessary that uh, the commerce student can also do. Maybe this regulation is advantage for the pure science student who must have studied physics, chemistry, biology and uh, uh, the computer science. But, but still many of the scientists, many of the educators have still voiced, the, voiced out their concern that without maths and physics is going to be difficult for the students. That's why AECT is very clearly says this is the guidelines. We are not telling or any binding on the any state or university to accept. So I'm telling students, my dear students, this new guidelines, it is not binding on any state or any university. I don't think the top universities like Anna University or top institutions like IIT or top deem universities like VIT will accept students only with uh, without maths or physics. Maybe even today few deem universities are accepting students, physics, chemistry, biology students without maths for courses like biotechnology, bioinformatics related. But still, even those students who, who is without mathematics, who joined biotechnology in a few universities are finding very difficult. For example, in case you want to do your post graduation, you need to really write the gate exam. And in gate exam, max also plays in a very important role. That's why we have seen the analysis very clearly as, as stating that the students without mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, who joined biotechnology in few universities have never been able to really qualify and get good marks in gate examination. So remember, though the, the AACT guideline says without max or physics, you can do engineering, but most of the universities and most of the state government will still insist for max physics, chemistry because giving admissions on the basis of marks, normalization of subjects is all going to be very challenging in case they accept the and implement the new regulations. We have to wait and see how the national education policy is going to be implemented, how the state governments are going to take it up. up, up after that only we can very clearly say these type of regulations will come into full time action. Right now because the ACT has stated maybe few universities very few universities might accept the AACT's proposal to admit students without maths or physics, but still they have to have the three subjects out of the, the, the subject which I mentioned earlier. So remember, you need to really study maths, physics, chemistry in case you want to attend any competitive exams related to engineering admissions. So let's wait for the thing. Next is another very important thing is for admission to engineering. The ACT also very clearly state that the unreserved category people, uh, those who uh, comes in open competition, they should have scored minimum 45% in plus two. The reserved category, whether OBC, SC and all should have scored at least 40% minimum to qualify for engineering. So it means that for OC this 45 and for the other communities 
uh, reserve communities with 40 percent. So these are the major uh, the changes in the uh, admission process for engineering and technology related courses in the coming year. Anyway, we'll be keep updating you. Right now, I tell the students, if you are maths, physics, chemistry, don't worry, start preparing for the competitive exams. Try to get as much as mass possible because few states like Tamil Nadu, uh, they, they give admissions only on the basis of your board exams. So remember, start preparing for your board exams and also if you're planning to write the competitive line uh, exams like IIT, JE exams or DIM University exams, start parallelly preparing for it. Anyway, wish you all the very best. In fact, doing engineering and technology courses definitely has got huge opportunity if you update your skills and technology time to time and other. That is what we always keep telling you. Year after your degree, marks will not have much value. Your skills will have more value. So remember, even if the regulation says maths and physics are not needed, but without mathematics, physics is going to be very difficult for you to update and learn the future technologies, something related to data science or artificial intelligence, machine learning and all this. So remember, you have to go about it. So it's a great uh, information for even the 10th standard students. If you're planning to go for a technology related course, it's better to take maths, physics, chemistry, even in the future. Wish you all the very best. We'll come back with more information in coming videos.